Hey everyone, Sir Termo here again. And you know what time it is. Tomorrow we get the new patch. We get patch 4.3. And as it is tradition for now, I'm going to bring you my patch notes breakdown. And 15, and I don't have enough hands for it. I don't have enough fingers. 15 deck recommendations for you all to try out tomorrow and the rest of the week as the patch comes out. So if you're not familiar with the way that we do these videos, we're gonna spend the first 30 minutes to 40 minutes, sometimes I ramble a lot, just discussing the patch. This time we're probably gonna spend right around that 40 minute mark because we're also gonna talk about rotation, which is one of the big news that is coming as part of this patch. So we're gonna do patch notes breakdown, then we're gonna do some rotation conversations, and then around the 45, 50 minute mark, we can go to the 15 deck recommendations. So if you're just here to get decks and get decks idea with the new champions, then you can just skip ahead. I have timestamps all of them below in the description. But if you want to listen to our reactions to the patch and then a conversation about rotation, then you can stay with me as we go through the whole video. Now, again, this patch is interesting, right? Because it's the start of really the, the, the competitive season. We just came out of like the beta season for competitive. Now we have the new daily rumbles that are going to start actually counting for world qualifications. We're going to have the Runeterra opens every single month that are also going to count towards world qualifications. So you're going to have a lot more competitive minded players that are going to be coming back into the game now that we're no longer in beta and that rank and tournament results actually matter again. With that, Riot is also introducing introducing the rotation. And of course, we also have the expansion. If we start first with the notes themselves, we have patch notes 4.3. And obviously we have the new expansion, Glory in Nabori. That's the first thing we're gonna start with. Uh, the Glory for Nabori expansion covers three champions that we're getting. We're gonna get Jack, Set, and Samira. If you've been missing out, I have reaction videos for all three champions. You can go to my channel and find those. So, you know, that way you get the reactions for me on those cards. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about the cards here because I already reacted to them and kind of have my initial reactions to them. Now, with the expansion and new champions, we do get a couple of new mechanics, right? So the first one is going to be coin. And coin is like an Ionia spell that gets created by certain cards. Here you have the attentive account, for example, that creates it. And what coin does is that you use one mana and you can refill at least one mana. That, that amount of mana that you refill is going to stack based on how many coins you have. So the idea with this mechanic is that you're able to just play the coin and get all your unit mana back. Because this is refilling your unit mana first. And if for some reason you already have full unit mana, then it refill your spell mana second. Got to keep in mind, you'll never go over the amount of mana that you could actually have in a turn. So if you only have five mana gems, it will only refill up to five unit mana and then refill three spell mana. So you can only refill eight mana total. It cannot refill nine or ten or whatever. So you can't cheat out like huge units on like an early turn. But again, it's going to prioritize the unit mana and then prioritize the spell mana second if your unit mana is already full. The idea is that you're able to stack them up and you're able to cheat out two big units in a single turn, right? If you have seven coins stack in your hand for example you can play a seven drop then have then use one spell mana to refill your unit mana back to seven and play another seven drop so that's the idea with coin and you're going to see this in the set and jack package then the next one is going to be brash and honestly brash might be the best keyword that we have gotten in a long time like I think I underrated Brash in my initial reaction when it was got revealed, but this this keyboard is actually so crazy. Think about fearsome, right? And and how fearsome is already a good a good keyboard. It's not a bad keyboard. It's good. It's not broken. This is better than fearsome. This reminds me of elusive because what people don't realize is that having three or more health is a lot harder than it sounds. You're really going to have to commit to blocking with units that you usually don't want to commit. And a lot of times, your cheap one or two drops or three drops that have that three or four health tend to have lower attack. So they end up not even trading favorably onto the unit that has Brash. Not only that, but all the units that have Brash so far have pretty good stat lines. So they're not like Elusive where the stat lines get reduced because Elusive is such a good keyword. Brash units, like, think of Jack. He's a four mana, four, five. That stat line is already crazy. You add Brash into that, and, and it's like, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. 
uh yeah this this keyboard is crazy and it's gonna get tiring very quickly when you realize that you're gonna have little blockers to actually be able to block and you're gonna have you taking that damage over and over again it's, it's a much better it's a much better fearsome it's a much better fearsome uh yeah there we go block with three the other thing about brash that's super low rated damage to your unit is permanent right usually you can reduce the power of a unit to get your fearsome to go through but then they get that power back at the start of the next turn health if the opponent blocks with their units or if you block when they attack you could set it up so that then your brass units are not going to have any blockers when you attack with them in your in your attack because you can reduce the opponent's health below two that's also how the brass synergizes with the jack package and having that uh that strike spell in those water that leaves both units at one hp the idea is that you're leaving them at one hp so that they cannot block your brass units again i underrated this in my reactions and i go back and think this guy is nuts anyways perfect champions for perfect champions players we do have jack set samira all introduced into the game mode so cool for you all you're gonna have monthly challenges with 70 micro adventures unfortunately i'm not gonna lie i'm not a path of, path of champions player myself uh but i'm sure this is super exciting for those of you who enjoy the game mode uh so really cool you know great that you're still all getting content there then we also getting an event the dragon master event uh so the band pass rewards seems like it's just mostly car backs a couple icons here we do have the emotes which are amazing by the way and then looks like we have two skins here as well that are going to be part of the dragon master pack so that's that's pretty nice okay okay uh la, la. yeah yeah i honestly i do find the event pass to be worth the cost uh it's better than buying skins individually in my opinion i think skins as you're gonna see right here tend to be pretty overpriced i do think this aso skin looks like the aso and karma are both gonna be part of the paths path paths so that's pretty nice. So you have the Storm Dragons here. You have the Tertrilli Dragon Karma. And then you have Kaisa skin. Okay, the Kaisa one looks pretty cool too. Karma looks nice. Actually, this Aso art, this Aso art is kind of kind of nutty too. Yeah, this, this Aso art is pretty crazy. If you can actually level up Aso and the opponent doesn't surrender right away. Ah, Karma level up is okay. I like the Kaisa. I like the Kaisa level two. I like the Kaisa level two. I don't know. I really like this pose. But again, if you're asking me, skins are not worth the price. I'm sorry, I love Raya, and I give Raya my money when it comes to emotes and boar skins. But actual champion skins tend to not be worth the price. So take that with a grain of salt, especially now that your champion could be rotated a year from now. Yeah, definitely not. You're not going to catch you spending real money on skin, but I will spend it on the pass and everything else. You have Fade Dragon Ash. There we go. Uh, Jack, of course, new champion here that gets his nice level up. Set, also get a new one. And also has his own level up. And then Nami as well. Oh, this Nami one looks beautiful. Yeah, the Nami one looks beautiful as well. I love it. And then we have the car bags. Most of these car bags are probably going to be from the past. So there we go. There we go. Cool, 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 cool. Here's the emotes, which also look to be from the past. The Samira one is actually great. I, I love it. The set one is also kind of cool. And then you have a bunch of icons. And rank it icons for the better season. And then the bundles. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, this is all the thing. This is what I care about balance changes i don't know why they put them all the way in the bottom they tried to sneak it in on us but this is what's actually gonna affect our gameplay competitive gameplay so first one is a nerf to the trusty ramhound so ryan must think that elites funny enough elites are kind of falling off to be honest but ryan must think that elites are still kind of a non-fun play pattern so they actually nerfed the ramhound so that it's no longer an elite what this means is that it will not get buffed up by the battlesmith which it's a fair nerf because this could be a one mana 4-4 four, four if you had a battlesmith and then you had another elite to follow right after you put the right hand. So I think that's a very fair nerf. Then they're going to preemptively nerf Powder Pandemonium. So instead of 4 costs, now it's going to be 5 costs. And the reason they're doing this is because the Samira package brings a lot of plunder cards to Nazis. So they're scared of monkeys being kind of crazy with Samira. I do think 
I do think it's still interesting to try it out. Uh, even as a five cost, it might actually end up working out to play this card. So that, that could be interesting. Porto Palooza goes from burst speed to focus. Oh my goodness. This is such a huge nerf. I mean, the card's still great. Don't get me wrong, right? You still draw, you still put two portals. But the fact that it's no longer burst, it's kind of like how, how Anna Lacaroros went from burst to focus as well. It doesn't let you have burst speed blockers to defend the opponent's attack. So no longer can you rely on being able to do Portofalusa when the opponent attacks and be able to get some blockers out of it to be able to save yourself. Really, really good change in my opinion. It's kind of funny how all these draw cards are going from burst to focus. I think Ryan needs to realize that you really don't want to have burst speed summons. They end up being a little bit of a power as we saw with Anakaboros and as we're seeing with Portofalusa here. It's blockers. They just become a little bit too full strange to play against. And then Jace Heimer gets a hit. Hestek Handler loses key quick attack. It's not a bad change. Obviously, I don't think it kills the deck. I think Hestek Handler is still doing what it needs to do, which is buffing all your turrets everywhere at plus one, plus one. But the fact that it loses that quick attack does make it less of a threat. That way, you're actually keeping your, your, yourself healthy and not just losing for core health every time that the handler will attack on you so really like it it also makes it less likely for for you to be able to transfer quick attack into the rest of your turrets if you have the two cost turret right steam just got buff and just got nerfed goes from a 3-3 to a 3-2 and obviously i think this nerf is also fair steam is probably one of the success stories of the last patch I think this card became really, really good in the any, in any Evelyn deck. So I think it's fair to actually nerf it to a 3-2. Because uh, usually you're going to have you're gonna have a husk there anyways. So he's still going to usually come down as a 3-3. Because you're going to have that husk there. But at least now, without having 4 health, it allows people to be able to actually trade more effectively into Steam. So really, really good change. Honestly, all 4 of these hits are very, very good. Uh, I guess the only one I, can, I, I don't agree with is the part of Pandemonium, but maybe Riot found something during the pre-testing that kind of made it seem like everything else here looks pretty fair. And, you know, it, it does what it needs to do. It does what it needs to do. Because we Riot also doesn't need to do a lot of buffs and nerfs because we get rotation. Now, the next set of buffs here are two cards that kind of ended up getting rotated. You do have a buff here to the Serpent, goes from 1-1 one, one, and now it goes back to me at 2-1, which is what it used to be originally. However, again, we're going to talk about rotation here, but you have cards like Zoe that got rotated out. And usually that's the easiest way to be able to get the Serpent with the Zoe Super Cushion, right? So a lot of the import cards got rotated out, so it's not as easy to get the Serpent anymore as it used to be. So I think that's why that's a fair nerf. Then these cards all ended up getting rotated and then they ended up getting buffed. Let me just confirm that that is the case. So if we go to PNC, did the Ballistic Buff get rotated? Ballistic Buff did get rotated. Did the Combat, combat Chefs got rotated? They also got rotated. And then Atrocity definitely got rotated. So the rest of the buff are all two cards that got rotated that are not part of the eternal format and not standard. So it looks like Riot is willing to be able to buff cards back up to the previous quote-unquote powerful state now that they're not going to be part of the ranked experience. I don't know how I feel about that because you still want Eternal to be playable. They still plan to have a ranked season for Eternal every three months. You still plan to have a room terror open that might be Eternal. You still plan to probably have some daily rumbles that are going to be Eternal. You don't want this Eternal format to just become a cesspool where you just have the strongest cards that, 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 that are like overpowered, right? So, Ballistic Buck is probably not going to be that card, but I think Atrocity potentially could be something that breaks Eternal format, especially as you have cards that continue getting better and better with Atrocity on the field. So, Ballistic Buck gets the one power back, Atrocity now goes back from slow to fast, and Warships goes from 2-2 two, 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 to 2-3, two, like it used to be in the past, like almost two years ago. Again, good nerfs, uh, good buffs, sorry. And I guess, again, it will bring these cards back to being powerful, but I am concerned that if you're making the, these buffs like that to, to Eternal, you might actually kind of break the format. And I guess that's the idea though, that, you know, Eternal might be a format where you really have some overpowered things. 
Um, so we'll see. I think that's going to kind of put away people from Eternal even more and just have them focus more on standard. So, yeah, so those are all the buffs. All the buffs and nerfs that we get. Some of them for Eternal. Some of them, again, for standard. Um, I guess thank you for both because whatever buff or nerf for standard also applies to Eternal. Then you have a little announcement here about the competitive system. That's what I talked about. The competitive system is going to start with this new patch where now we're going to be more competitive. You're going to have different ways to qualify for worlds, whether it's winning Runeterra Open, that happens every two months, or uh, placing high on ladder gets you some points, placing high on Runeterra Opens, winning daily rumbles, etc., etc. Rotation, we'll speak about that after here. Uh, some miscellaneous stuff here, some bug fixes. So they fixed the Priesthood of the Desert Light bug. Honestly, they should have just left it like this because the card didn't see play anyways, even though it didn't require six unique champions. They changed the LP formula. Cool, cool, cool. Let's see how. Let's see if he actually gets fixed this time for the LP gains and losses. Uh, clean up a bunch of tags. Bust a shot. Uh, Turugu, Rosita, go get a custodian on a patch of Factor Precedent. Champions that level up will take another over that to disintegrate. Well, that's a, that's, I didn't even know that that was a bug. Champion spells now turn back into champions after being killed by Master G. <laughs> I did not know that this was a bug. That would have been a funny bug. Joe Bolden, challenge units not correct in looking place. Percentage of that. Okay, okay. Trying to summon Dark News. Okay, that's a lot of bug fixes. Usually we never get bug fixes this much. I'm glad. I'm glad that they are addressing a lot of bugs. Fede will no longer activate later rounds after Fede unit exit a frozen tumor stasis. Uh, the title, Path of Champions, Path of Champions, Path of Champions. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So, overall, again, I think the changes are healthy. But again, the big thing is rotation. Rotation is going to completely change the game as we know it. If you're not familiar with what rotation is, Riot is splitting the game into two formats. Standard and Eternal. A standard is going to be a limited set of cards. I think... For example, uh, this is just a random number. Legends of Terra has a thousand cards in the game. Out of the thousand cards, Riot is going to rotate 300 of those. So now in the standard format, you're only going to be able to play with the 700 cards that the Nugget rotate. The other 300 rotated cards can only be played on the second format, which Riot calls Eternal. So Eternal format, you can play with all 1000 cards. Standard format, you can only play with those 700 cards that did not get rotated. This is the first rotation that Legacy of Terra has ever had. And it's going to be a lot of mixed reactions because a lot of champions are going to go from, are going to get rotated. And the reason why this matters, you might think, well, you can still play Eternal, right? Well, the rank season is going to be standard, right? Riot is committed to keeping the ranks to standard. They're, they're, they're saying that they're going to have a rank season that's going to be eternal every three months. But for competitive players like myself with goals of reaching worlds, etc., and really competing in a competitive setting, we're only going to be doing standard, which means that a lot of these champions that are going to get rotated, we're really never going to play them again. And that's kind of where you have a lot of the mixed feelings with the with rotation now honestly the amount of cards that riot has decided to rotate completely took me back um i do think rotation at the end of the day is going to be a good thing for the game i think obviously the car the carpool kept getting bigger and bigger i said 1000 but i'm pretty sure we're like way over 1000 cards total in legends of terra in the span of three years that the game has been out um which means that as the pool gets bigger, it's going to be harder and harder for Raya to really be able to balance the game properly. And there's a ton of cards, right? Like you probably think of like 500 plus cards that never saw any play in the game that Raya can either rotate, leave some in, and by rotating some powerful cards as well, they, they can potentially make room for those weaker cards to find some play rates in the meta. There's a lot of reasons why rotation is going to be good. However, I do feel with all of you, I really really feel with all of you when you get sad about your champions getting rotated because look at this right here <sighs> so my my soraka my soraka is getting rotated so <sighs> trust me trust me I, I, know, I know your pain seeing your favorite champion get rotated does hurt 
you can still play them in eternal and like i said you're still going to have rank season for eternal every three months is what they have said you might have some daily rumbles and even some winter opens which might actually be eternal format so you're still able to play them as they as the months pass on so they're not deleted from the game it does suck though that for 90 percent of us we're only going to be playing standard and we're never going to see a lot of these champions again for me personally it's, it's bittersweet but i think again it's necessary for the growth of the game and for the health of the game so let's go through the list because man this list is absolutely crazy uh instead of like th this is showing you the champions right so i'm gonna go down to like the actual list and you can find this list in lowerreport.com um I'm gonna go through the actual list here, which shows each card from each card from each region. But just a quick glance at the champions: we have Lulu, Six, Poppy, Rumble from Bandle City. So quite a bit of different strategies here, right? With Poppy, with Six, your landmarks, type of decks, your Rumble with your Bane, etc. That you're not gonna see these decks anymore, unfortunately, right? Six Talia, bye bye. Rumble Bane, bye bye. Bilge Water. Rotates Twist the Fate, Time Kench, Gamplank, TK Raka goes bye bye. GP Seguani, that has been a staple in the game for over two years, goes bye bye. And Twist the Fate, all the Twist the Fate gate, uh, decks are also just gone. Then we have Fiora and Lutz. Uh, really weird to rotate Lutz because I feel like it's the only Demacia control type of champion. Uh, so kind of sucks to see Lutz go, but there goes the Lutz Jace. We have Prom, Trondo, and Anivia. Trondo is crazy because Trondo is probably the best champion in Freljer that you could just slap into anything, right? So, like, there you go, your, your Feel the Rush strategies and anything else with Trondo. Uh, yeah, it's, it's tough, right? Brom, even even Brom being gone means, like, that deck that we showcase with Swain Brom doesn't really work anymore. Irelia, Jazz, really Sin. Irelia means no more... You see Irelia, which a lot of you might be happy about. Jasuo, it's crazy to see Jasuo gone. Jasuo Katarina did win a seasonal uh, uh, last last fall. It was still a good deck. And then Lee Sin, obviously, I, I guess terrorized the meta for long enough that it was time to go. Draven, Katarina, Vladimir, Red Gwen was not that long ago before Katarina was kind of taking over the game. Really crazy to also see her gone. Asriel. Thank you, Ryder. Victor, I'm going to miss Victor, man. Victor was so good. Victor was so good. So fun of a champion. Vi, she was okay. Sometimes she shines, sometimes she's whatever. Elise is super surprising. Seeing Elise gone, that has been a staple of Shadow Owl decks since the beta of Legends of Runeterra is so bittersweet because I feel like Elise was probably the best well-balanced champion. So I really want to know what Riot is thinking by rotating Elise and the Spider package. Because I don't think she didn't have it. She didn't really have any deck that was busted. She just had a lot of good decks which she provided value. She was like a very splashable champion. Kindred, Trash, and Hackering following up as well from Shadow Owls. Shadow Owls got hit pretty, pretty big, you know. And then Shurima, I think, got completely decimated. You lose Cillian, you lose Seraph, you lose Sibber. So you lose your best champion on Sundays, you lose your best mid-range champion on Sever, and even Cillian in Stone Like Echo Cillian, like all three of these champions were very playable. And Target also takes a huge hit with Soy, Aphelios, Soraka, Tarek. Now Soraka and Tarek haven't seen play recently, but Aphelios and Soy still could be a menace that people had to worry about. Honestly, really sad seeing all these champions being gone from the standard format. I do think it's going to be better for the game, but I do think it's okay for everybody to feel sad and be a little bit upset about your favorite champions getting rotated. I mean, you know, some of my favorite decks like TK Raka, like Aserelia, are all getting rotated and it, it, it sucks. It sucks, but what can you do, right? You, you got to just adapt and if you want to continue being competitive, you got to do what you got to do. Now, again, I'll post the link to this report below, but there's a lot more cards here. I'm not going to go through every single card. But I will go through the ones that I think catch my attention, right? Bando City loses, like every region is gonna lose staples. And the crazy thing about this is that my brain, you all know, you see me play the game and how I always play around everything. It's gonna take a while for me to get used to which cards I have to play around and which cards I don't have to play around anymore. Because in my mind, I'm still gonna be playing, oh, they might have a pokey stick, but guess what? 
Pokey Stick got rotated, right? Pokey Stick is gone, and Loot Travelers is gone. Really big hits that really change identity of Bando City and even PNC in the terms of Loot Travelers. The Chemist was very surprising for me. I think she enabled a lot of the Nardex, right? And the Pterodactyl, as you saw with the Pink City that we showcased recently. Really sad to see it go. Arsenal was a big finisher for Landmark related decks. A Telescope, really, really crazy. Safety Inspector makes sense because they're also rotating six. So Safety Inspector probably wouldn't find a home without six Talia. Shellfolk is going to make Aikero very sad. <laughs> Uh, what are the, what are the hits here? Bandle 3? Wow. Bandle 3. How the Mighty have so fallen. Risu just kills our timelines deck, but doesn't matter because timelines also get rotated. Oh, wow. Papercraft. Wow, wow, wow. Honestly, Bandle City didn't get hit as bad because a lot of the cards from Bandle City were not really played that often. There's some key cards, right? Pokey Stick, Aloof Traveler, Stress Defense, Chemist. That were really good for Bando City, but a lot of these cards you really didn't see play. So I think Bando City got a little bit easy there. If we look at some of the other regions, that's when you start seeing some of the big effects, especially Shurima and Targon, as we discussed later. Um, Sass Praven is a huge hit. You you'd also take out the nap. Jolfish, honestly, it's gonna make Lurk feel a lot weaker. Like Lurk is still in the game because it doesn't really rotate it. A lot of other lurk cards, but Jolfish was like their big finisher. And it feels really bad that that is gone, right? Um, nah, so many doesn't do anything here. Fortune Croaker, Born Skewer, again, more, more lurk hits. Uh, Grifter, Potstipus, I guess because the Kevaka, the Monkey Idol. Oh man, double up for the Pink City value. Man, GP is, listen, GP is so big. So, so big. Uh, build, <laughs> I like how they rotated Jack and they introduced a new Jack. It's not too bad. Bell's Rider is also not too bad, right? Some key cards are still in the game. You still have Make It Rain. You still have some of the key Bell's Rider cards. Uh, so it's not as bad as some other regions. Demacia loses Sharp Sight, Concert Strike, Ranger Resolve, Bannerman, Golden Ages. These are all huge hits that kind of define identities of the Masia at one point or another. Not only did Elites get nerfed by the Hound, but they also now lose the Bannerman. That, I think Elites are just dead, at least in the standard format. I don't see how they can survive without the Bannerman there. Um, I mean, this, this, is, this is pretty crazy, right? Um, Lauren Protege, Sitcher the Bull. Dragon Shout hits dragons, even though a lot of dragons don't get rotated out. Um, back to back, I guess lots got rotated, so it doesn't matter. Same thing with the Insider. <laughs> Bryce Till, First Blade. Wow, 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 wow. A lot of these other cards don't really see a lot of play here. Warships. Wow, blow your badger bear. But the Grizzly Rangers didn't get rotated, so you can still summon stuff with the Grizzly Rangers. That, that's one thing. Actually, let's pause right here. That's one thing that Riot has confirmed, by the way. If you play standard, randomly generated cards, let's say, like, you know how Karma randomly generates spells? They will not generate spells from a t like that are not in standard already. So if they're randomly generated, they will not create cards that are not in standard. So Karma will not create something from Ionia that got rotated out. However, if the card specifically says a certain card name, so in this case, if the Grizzly Ranger says summon a Loyal Badger Bear when I die, it will still summon the Loyal Badger Bear even though it got rotated, right? This, a, a good example of this is with, is with uh, Bando City. Pokey Stick got rotated, but Nar can still generate Pokey Stick, okay? Just, so just keep that in mind. Just keep that in mind that just because it gets rotated doesn't mean that you might not run into the car because you have Telstones that could generate them. You have certain champions that can generate certain tokens like Pokey Stick. In the case of like Bilgewater, for example, Champion Spell, which is uh, your your uh, Pike, your Pike has Bone Skewer as a Champion Spell. You could still get Bone Skewer as a Champion Spell from Pike. Your Champion Spells are not going to change either. So you still might run into some of these cards. They just cannot be randomly generated by cards that randomly generate cards. Like Oncologist will not be able to generate you a Pokey Stick anymore, etc., etc. Relier, 
failure gets completely, completely annihilated in this rotation. I cannot believe that they really took failure and took almost all of their best cards, right? Not only did you lose Trundle, the best champions, you lose Trosha. You lose Spirits Unleashed, which is probably one of the best failure cards ever. And I didn't think it was that busted. In three, whatever, you lose it that stair, so you don't have to very nice into it that stair combo. You lose feel the rush, which most of the Freddy decks are running. Now I'm fine with feel the rush going by that. Maybe people focus on War Mother Scope more, but you can't deny that this week you get completely targeted. Cavern Tavern Keeper goes done, which also was a critical part of this region. Catalyst of Eon is gone. Rabin is gone. Babbling Jerk even. Sentry faces of the O1. Oh my goodness, like all these cards in this first row are playable one way or the other. Uh, the Mender has been seeing some play. Ancient Jedi, like, oh my goodness, that hits some old one strategy so badly because this Ancient Jedi was actually really good. Abominable Guardian even kills any Jedi strategy if the Ancient Jedi was not enough to do it. So any Jedi deck that you might have thought could be played on standard is gone. Like at that point, my 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 what I'm confused about, right? Why would you rotate Ancient Jedi and Abominable Guardian but not rotate the rest of the Jedi package? What's the point of still having the one drop Jedi? If you really, if it's never going to be playable because you're no longer going to have Ancient Jedi and Abominable Guardian to really make a functional Jedi deck, it, it doesn't make sense. Like, you're still keeping all these cards in standard that are not going to ever see any play now that you actually took their support away from them. Oh my goodness, Ryan. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh man. Weirding Stone, so they literally just get hit with all the ramp. And the reason they hit the Catalyst, the basis of the Weirding Stone, they introduced those two other ramp cards recently. That's probably why. Ember Maiden, Troll Scavenger, Tarkas. Wow. They who endure pack mentality. Wow. This is another example, by the way. You, the Feral Mystic gets rotated, but you can still summon the Feral Mystic from the five mana ramp that summons a Feral Mystic. Like, oh, look, man. Another example here. You rotate the troop L knock, but you don't rotate, rotate the rest of the L knocks. I, I, I. Oh, Frelier, Frelier. What does Frelier have left? Udir? Udir package? Which I guess maybe is playable now that cards across the board are weaker. Ah. Oh, oh. Ah. Ah. I trust you, Ryan. I trust you. I trust you 100%. And this is going to make the game better, but. Some of these decisions and some of the cards that you chose to rotate and some of the associated cards that you chose to leave behind make absolutely no sense. Okay? Frelier is all going to be just Orn, I guess. Orn decks and, and Udyr decks. There's like nothing else in Frelier. I guess you still have some overall strategies, but with Bone Club. But my goodness. Ionia, you know what? Deep Meditation. Twin, Eye of the Dragon, Homecoming, four staple cards from a lot of Ionia decks gone like that. Uh, obviously, all of the Raven Dancer pack, all of the Blade Dance package gets rotated out together with Virelia. So, no reason to spend much time on that. We have the Stun Landmark getting rotated. Scattered Power was a good hit. You have some aggressive strategies here, like the Mourn, the Inspiring Mentor getting rotated, which Kind of crazy to me to see the morning this list when you still have a lot of the other elusives. Uh, but I guess they're scared of having too many one drop elusives, as we saw with the encroaching shadows deck that we showcased. Oh my goodness, everything else here kind of makes sense. Like a lot of these cards are cards that we're not seeing play, and this is the type of rotation that kind of makes sense, right? I understand also rotating some powerful cards, but I feel like sometimes some regions got hit a lot of a lot harder than others without any buffs to make up for that for that effect right so yeah the rest of these ionic cards are cards that you don't really see that much we go to noxus and noxus also took a big hit yeah lock gone sentry gone rear guard gone house spider gone decimate gone oh my goodness blaze edge gone which was playable in any decks Death Hand gone. Oh my goodness. They hit like everything from Swain Package. Flock and Death Hand, right? Sentry Flock gone. Oh my oh my goodness. Shumpo. 
that's fine i'm good with that whisper words is gone so they lose one of their only really good draw cards ah uh, calling strike gone grenadier yeah the crimson package all gets rotated out together with vladimir so that makes sense guillotine just goes bye bye reputation gets some cards hit right so you lose the reputation hasn't even been playable and they still lose the snapper turn of rose black rose spies Captain Jedi. The whole spider package gets rotated out together with the Elise. Wow. Noxus got hit pretty big too. But Noxus still has a lot of tools to kind of keep it potentially successful. However, however, losing Flock is a big, big, big freaking deal. Wow. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. The game is going to be so different, guys and girls. It's going to be so, so different. I'm excited, but I'm also scared. I'm excited, but I'm also scared. It's going to take me months to get used to the cards that are no longer present, especially when deck building. Here, you have PNC. And again, we celebrated Esso being gone, which is great, but they also lose Get Excited. They also lose Thermal. Bye bye, fan club president. I'm not gonna miss you. Pearl Cannon, Falling Feline, which hurts any Echo. I guess you can't play Echo Cillian because Cillian got rotated, but you could still play Echo Gents. But with the Falling Feline, I feel like it becomes a little bit worse as well. Static Shock is gone. Improvement is gone. Boom Kuroki is gone. Oh my goodness, Glorious Evolution! My memes! All the memes are gone. Concurrent timelines gone. Ballistic bar goes together with Victor. That makes sense. Stress testing. Progress day. I mean, progress day is fine. You never made that progress day. You always just got it from Ferris Financier or you got it from the Telstones, which you can still. No. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, no. You can no longer get it from Ferris. You can no longer get it from the two drop because it will not randomly generate a car. That's not in standard. So the only way to play progress day is from the peel top and tell stones. Okay. Oh, try beams, how the times have treated you. Everything else here looks pretty straightforward, kind of removing a lot of things that, that haven't really found a home in PNC, like Jay Medarda, uh, the henchman here. Here, here goes the rest of the Lnox, right? So they removed two Lnox, but leave the last one is still in defeat, is still in failure, huh? Wow. They also kind of remove like all the allegiance cards, which is kind of crazy. Shadow Isles also gets pretty big here, by the way. As you can see by the image being bigger than the other ones. They lose Battle Beast. Atrocity was already dead anyways. They lose Doom Beast, which is a huge hit to like Nightfall strategies. But oh, oh my goodness. Wait, wait, wait. I'm just looking at this. What are you supposed to play with Shadow House now? They 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 rotated Curse Keeper and Butcher, which is your self sacrifice. They rotated Skitter, Horror, Wraith Caller, Miss Wraith, which is your fearsome package. But yet you leave Callista and you leave Nocturne in the in the standard format when you rotated like all the support stuff out of it, right? Callista could level up if you were able to self sacrifice stuff. Nocturne could level up by having the fearsome, you know, because that's the whole reason you change the level up from just Nightfall to also fearsome. And now you're going back to that. You get rid of the Doom Beast, you get rid of the Sticking Unlooker, you get rid of all these fearsome cards, and you keep Nocturne in the game. This is the problem with rotation. I'm okay with cards getting rotated, but please, Ryo, make it make sense. Don't leave cards behind that are going to be worse off because they don't have their support with them which is what's gonna happen to nocturne i don't think you ever see a nocturne deck ever again with a skitter horror rave color miss rave onlooker and doombies in the game like i don't care how many nightfall cards you left in Targan. with without onlooker and doombies and the other fearsomes you're not gonna make nocturne work you might not even make nightfall work at all and neither would you make a list. So what's the point of them staying them in the standard format? Right? What's the point of keeping them in the standard format? Why don't you just rotate those out then and keep stuff like Hacker or Trash around? Oh man. Ryan. 
Come on, I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt, but you gotta make me, you gotta make me believe in you. Make me believe in you, man. Oh, Biofis is gone. Fine, change things up. Ha, ah, bots, Withering Well, that's a huge hit, right? It's gonna make aggro a lot better. Now you don't have to worry about Withering Bell. Soul Shepherd kills Ephemeral Strategies, Aristocrat or Blocker, Faded Memories, Unspeakable Horrors. You remove both pains. Another Nightfall hit. Gohar goes by, but you remove everything that deals one from Shadow Owls. Recent Myth, together with the other two, Curse Keeper, Butcher, both are gone. Withering Mist also gone. Another piece of healing here. Ephemeral gone, gone. Lutony, I mean, they were Terra Nivea, so it doesn't matter. Collector is gone. Caretaker is gone. Tornitoad is gone. More healing is gone. But Awakening, fine. Spectrum Matron, okay. Fangster, whatever. Absorb Soul also gone for whatever reason. Like, what I'm noticing here is that they just they just deleted every single heal. Well, Biofis, Speakable Horror, Gohar, Withering Miss. Wait, Unto Dust is also gone? Oh my god, Nightfall is dead. Why is Diana and Nachon stealing standard if you're gonna kill Nightfall like this? Make it make sense. <laughs> make it make sense. Oh no, Shurima, Perseverium, Absolver, Debau, Unravel Earth, Rat of Arcane, Rat of Calling, Shapestone, Treasure Seeker, Rat of Passage. These are fine, these are fine. Herald and Magus, Wooing Runner. Imagine possibilities, you know, just hit throws for whatever reason. Okay, the Shurima cards don't look like a lot of things got hit, but you gotta realize these cards up here Perseverian, Absorber, Devout, Rabble Earth, Rat of Arcane, Treasure Seeker, Shapestone, Rat of Calling. All of these cards made Shurima what it is. You're getting rid of almost all the landmark support by getting rid of Perseverian, Devout, Unravel Earth, and Six, but you still leave Talia in the game. If you're gonna get rid of Seraph and Six, get rid of Talia too. Now her only deck is gonna be throws, and you made throws worse by getting rid of many possibilities. I'm, I'm, I think I'm letting my frustration show, and it's not good, right? <laughs> it's not good. Honestly, I love this game to death, but uh, this these choices have leave a little bit to be decided. Leave a little bit to be desired. Um, this, you know, again, let's go back to that sample. We have a thousand cards in the game. 300 of them got rotated. However, of the 300 cards that got rotated, half of those are support for other cards that didn't get rotated. So at the end of the day, even though only 300 cards got rotated, there's going to be 600 cards that are going to be playable in the game because Ryle rotated the support that was supposed to go with them. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong, but that's what I'm feeling right now as I look at this list. So, wow. Okay. Last one is going to be Targon, right? Yeah, the last one is going to be Targon here, which loses the Soraka package. Cool. Mountain Goat, they lose a staple. Sparkle Fly, it's good for it to go. It created a lot of toxic strategies. Super cool, Shan. Again, they don't want to get us, allow us to, be able to get that snake. Gets beyond the flight. Another hit to Nightfall because why not? Targon Speak, Mountain Scryer, Grand Slam, Sojourners. A lot of these target cards were already unplayable, to be honest. So this is not as bad. Um, this is not as bad, to be honest. A lot of these cards were already unplayable. That's why I'm not even mentioning them. I'm very surprised that they took out Zoe, Scryer, and Super Cushion, right? Uh, the whole identity of Target is supposed to be Invoke. And you still have a lot of Invoke cards. You still have Star Shaping. You still have Aso. You still have Solari Priestess. But, you know, you are losing some of your big ones here. Especially Zoe, I think. It's part of the big one. You know, Target didn't get hit so bad when all things considered. 
But here we go, right? You completely butcher every Nightfall card from Shadow Owls. Doombies, Unspeakable Horror, Staging Unlooker, and the Burst Beast spell, and you don't touch Nightfall in Targon. Where is Nightfall supposed to play? Why would I ever play any Nightfall card? Actually, I guess technically Aphelios was Nightfall, right? The Flight was a Nightfall support. Sky Shadows is Nightfall. So, like, why is Diana in the game? Why is the Crescent, you know, the Overwhelm in the game? Why am I playing Nightfall? There's no Nightfall deck anymore. There's no Shadow Owls deck anymore, right? So it seems like Riot is trying to make us play, like, certain strategies within certain regions. And I, I don't know how I feel about it. I don't know how I feel about it. I, ah. I, I'm not happy right now. I'm not happy right now. I will not I will not deny that. As you can tell by my tone of voice as we go through some of these cards, as I actually spend time digesting some of the stuff that gets rotated here, right? I'm sad for some of the champions, right? I'm very sad for some of the champions. But honestly, the champions are secondary compared to some of the cards that I'm here that I'm seeing here that are followers or spells or landmark that are just getting completely rotated and kind of butchering the identity of the regions. No saying that we won't get used to them. We will get used to them. You know, the game will continue. Uh, it will continue thriving. So, you know, I'll continue playing it. And you're still going to continue seeing daily videos from me because I am too competitive to give up on this game. It's just kind of frustrating that there's going to be so many strategies that are just going to be completely gone, right? Like Nightfall, like Shadow House Fearsomes, like Shurima Landmark. Any, any Shurima Landmark deck is completely gone, to be honest. Um... It's a lot of ephemerals are gone, right? With with Hecarim. Like, there's a lot of, like, random decks. Jetty's here. Any Feel the Rush deck. That are, 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 elites are gone by Bannerman and the Hound Nerf. Like, this timelines. Any timelines. Like, there's so many decks. You see, I keep coming up with so many decks, right? Maybe this is just me. Because I play so many decks. As I play decks, decks every single day to showcase to you all. That I notice these effects. Because I play so many champions. And so many combinations. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt a lot. But, you know, still like this game. Maybe the answer will change after I play the patch in a while uh, tomorrow. Uh, but I, I love what I'm seeing from Samira. I love what I'm seeing from Jack. Set, so-so. I love what I'm seeing from the new champions. Uh, my concern is that by rotating a lot of these strategies, you're going to make it so that the game not just becomes whatever recently released busted card or busted champion package Riot releases, and that's all we're going to play, right? Notice the things that didn't get hit in this rotation. The things that got released recently, you didn't see any hits to like Barrows or Aatrox. You didn't see any hit to like, I guess Seraphine did lose the melee, right? Seraphine did lose the... Uh, the fan club president, but he didn't lose like the back alley bar, right? You see, you still have some seraphine strategies that could come out of there. Uh, you still have the whole Gwen Hollow package. You still have Ka uh, Kaisa package. You still have the Evelyn package. Um, a lot of the new champions and new packages didn't get voted out, which makes me feel like the game is going to become standard. It's going to become just whatever new champion and package get released. And that's my fear. That is my fear, but you know. This game is super fun, has a lot of decision making on it. Maybe I'm just trying to like make myself believe that. We'll see as, as the weeks go on how I really feel about it. But for now, I'm very, very scared about how many people this is going to put off and how many strategies is going to kill from the game. So, yeah, I mean, that, that's my thoughts and reaction. Maybe maybe I make an update on my thoughts in a couple of weeks. Uh, but yeah, well, enough of me rambling. Let's go to what you all have been waiting for. And this is going to be the 15 deck recommendations that I have for you for the new expansion coming in tomorrow. So the very first champion that I'm going to start with giving deck recommendations with is going to be Samira. This is no surprise. You all know how much I love the Samira reveal. So Samira is a two mana champion. And she wants to see a lot of cards being played in the span of like, I guess in the span of like one round, right? Or I guess two rounds, if you count your attack and your opponent's attack, it's two different rounds. 
So she's trying to see six cards she to level up and then just get battled like that. So the first idea that I have with Samira is going to be Samira with Master G. Now, the reason that Samira Master G I think makes sense is because Master G is going to discount some of the more expensive stuff that we have, like place your bets, for example. But Master G also loves all the Sarima package because she's giving us very cheap spells in Stylish Shot and Pirouette that allows to trigger our flow, making a Master G stronger, faster, and faster, right? So we kind of combine the fact that we reduce stuff helps Samira out because he lets us play more cards per turn. The fact that Samira gets the flare and also brings the Stylish Shot and the Pirouette allows our flow to get triggered. Now, this deck also combines the coin package from set, even though we're not playing set. So we are playing the Accountant, we are playing the Pit Professional. I think these are probably the two best coin generators in Ionia. Together we place your bet, which gives us two draw and two coins. That would allow me to also be able to cheat out certain things here. Because we have an easy way of three game flow, I also like playing the Dragon Color here, which potentially gives me really good attack, a really good blocker, depending on the turn. And if we rally with Samira, then obviously it can become an attacker every single turn. So pretty darn good. The rest of the deck is kind of just there to help us save our save our master g and also allows to level up samira right so things like momentous choice are really nice can count two for samira uh, all out it's a really good card i feel like it's kind of like a sharp side it said that it's in Noxus. stylish shot giving us a lot of value buju style the stylish shot is actually nice just obviously because we have the elusives we're able to potentially guarantee that hit to the nexus to get another stylish shot buju style counts as two spells as well a tag out is an amazing way to save our champions or to potentially recall the opponent's unit together with Worthy Soul. And then we just protect the Rebellion. So it's kind of like a like a control, like like a slow ramp up to get Samira and Master G. And obviously, if Samira levels up and Master G also levels up, the rally from Samira ends up being really good for Master G because it allows him to just clear the opponent's blocker away with the level two master G, master G ability. Lastly, we are playing two Dark Infan here so that we can keep each other, we can keep ourselves a little bit healthy against the opponent's blocker. So yeah, so this is gonna be the first recommendation, which is gonna be Samira Master G. The second one is gonna be another Samira deck, but this one is actually playing her cards. And this is gonna be Samira Seiyu Annie Plunder. So the Samira package brought in a lot of plunder cards, right? We have the Elegant Age that gets plunder plus two plus zero. We have the Day and the Militioner. We have that's technically not a plunder card, but can deal one to the enemy Nexus with Sinaiasis or Yuani or trigger the plunder of one of my allies. We have then the Despoiler giving plus one to everything, dashing dandy, getting plus three himself, and then the Art, the Android, which can activate all the plunder effects that we just talked about. So obviously this deck is kind of trying to do the same thing as GPC Yuani used to do, except with Nexus, where we just try to go really wide and just try to hit the opponent's Nexus every single turn because of all the cards that we have. We don't have to, we don't have warning shot, but we do have the flare. Because remember, and for some reason I can't click it right here, the Samira, her her flare is burst speed. So you can use the flare as a warning shot pretty much obviously it costs one so it's not as cheap as like a warning shot and that's where the synergy with Sejuani come in Sejuani is going to be really easy to level up in this deck between the flare between the saboteur between the fearsome here the daring demolitioner tell speaker all of these cards can do a lot of damage you also have the style shot right you have the pirouette that can push damage to the enemy Nexus, allowing us to level up Sejuani, and they just kind of go from there. I am playing the Frost Coat Cup, as you can see here, as like a potential alternate Overwhelm, since we're not playing Gangplank. Instead, the Frost Coat Mother could become that, or if we have like an Aqua Hand in the beginning, we can always play, play it as a 2-3, and kind of use it as a way for Chris and Pigeon to be able to push damage, uh, to be able to, to, to deal one to the Frost Coat Cup. It should be a pretty fast, fast deck, uh, just pushing a lot of damage early on. And if the game goes long, you know you have your Sejuani to be able to just go in there and just kind of push a ton of a ton of value, right? So that, that's the whole idea with this deck. And that's what we kind of play in it this way. Uh, we kind of have like an infinite generator of one warning shots here because of the Samira. I'm actually super excited to kind of try out this deck uh, because I think there is some potential here because Sejuani can probably shut down a lot of the strategies that things like Seb and Jack want to do in the in the current meta that we're gonna see tomorrow so yeah so that's samira said you want 
here comes the third Samira deck recommendation of the day. And that's going to be Samira Fizz. So, ooh, and Siri thinks that I'm talking to her. Anyways, so Samira Fizz, uh, they're, they're simple, right? You have a lot of spells, so you go for Samira, helps us level up the Fizz, helps us get it to Elusive, and you just going to push a lot of damage this way. This one became a little bit awkward to deck build because both Bando City and uh, Natsus lost a lot of the good draw cards that they have. We don't have Whisper Words. We don't have Hidden Pathways anymore. Really, the only draw cards that we have are Pulsar and Signpost and Porta Palooza because we also lost Pokey Stick, right? So it can be a little bit awkward because you're going to probably run out of resources too fast because you're kind of playing a very low to the curve. But uh, Bando City does have a lot of cheap units and a lot of cheap spells that we can potentially use. So Bird, Oedipus, it casts us two spells to again let us level up Samira quicker. Concologist can generate something else for us. Uh, Wandering Shepherd, I think, is really underrated in a potential deck like this because the equipment can be good with Fizz or Samira. We have the Rune Squire giving us the blade to again can synergize with either Fizz or Samira. Again, because Samira is burst free, you're always going to have a way to be able to save your Fizz if you need to. Uh, Demolition is kind of nice as well to activate our Dandy. That's the only reason that we play it. And also to just deal one and have a kind of a blocker that we can use, right? And just kind of push damage to the Nexus. Then we have All Out, Group Shot, Stylish Shot, Pirouette. Honestly, anytime you play Samira, I like the idea of playing Pirouette and Stylish Shot. These cards are all so good. Posting Signpost to the Fener Samira and Porta Palooza again, because I feel like I needed some draw. And these regions no longer have any really good draw that you can play aside from this. So... This is kind of like another aggressive deck, and that's because I think Samira is going to be mostly an aggressive champion. Uh, and that's why you kind of end up with this version of the deck. So, yeah. Let's move on to the next deck. Which, surprise, 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 is another Samira deck. But this time, we're going to start making the transition to the next champion, which I'm going to cover, which is going to be Jack. So, this one is going to be Samira plus Jack which is probably going to be one of the most popular decks that you might see early on because the Bilgewater package ends up working really, really well with the Samira package. As you can see here, we end up mostly playing all the all the uh, Jack package rather than actually playing the Samira package. We are still playing Samira, Daring the Demolitioner, Stylish, and Pirouette, but my version of the Jack Samira combo is kind of focusing more on what the Jack and the Brash can bring. So you have the Bar Knuckles, you have the Packet Picker, you have your Knuckle here, your Brazen Buccaneer, Five Punch Pablo, and Father Fury, and then obviously Make a Rain, Barber Chain, and an Ending Wave. One thing I noticed with this deck, as I was seeing some other streamers play the early access, is that you run out of cards really easily. And that's why I play both Barbed Wire and an Ending Wave. Because you end up getting a lot of cheap cards in your hand. Like, look, everything that we have is three costs or less, except for Jack and except for the two draw spells. So it doesn't matter that these cards that you're getting are fleeting. You're probably going to be able to play them right away as soon as you draw them, even though they're fleeting. So this kind of keeps us healthy. We're also going to have a lot of generations for coins because that's our only way to be able to really level up the Jack. With the coins, with the bar knuckles, the bar knuckles you're sitting just is so well with the Samira package as well. Uh, and then eventually we can finish the game between Samira and Jack, getting a lot of value between the Brash, etc. Uh, we are able to, again, summon a lot of brush attackers between the Buccaneer. The Fat Punch Pablo is really good with the price fight to allow our, our strike abilities to actually get triggered, whether it's Samira or Jack, depending on the situation. And heck, we even played the Knuckle to summon the Mako and then summon the Bull to potentially just rally and have elusive and overwhelm as well. I like the Fight of Fury because the one cost spell could also be really good. It could hit Stylish Shot or it could hit other one cost spells from Bilgewater, which are all really, really nice. And the Make Rain, I like the Make Rain a lot as a way to finish up opponents after you do the prize fight. Um, and it's also, I, th I feel like I'm going to expect a lot of one health units in the current meta. So yeah, this deck, again, is probably going to be one of those popular ones that you're going to see. And I do expect it to be pretty strong, at least from what I saw from some of the content creators that were showcasing the early access earlier in the day. So yeah, that's Samira and Jack. And we're going to move away from Samira for a moment and focus on Jack. So this is going to be the second Jack deck of the day. And this one is going to be Sad Jack. Now, Jack, honestly, is a lot stronger than I expected him to. So this version with Ionia just tries to use Jack and the Barn Knuckles, and obviously the Knuckle and the Pocket Picker, as just tempo gainers, right? So ways to get tempo. 
because at the end of the day, you're just gonna try to finish them up with elusives as well as be able to cheat things out with the coin. Uh, so the idea with this version of the deck is that you can kind of put down some elusive damage with the Green Guy Duo, uh, with the Disciples, Accountant. We have the Sparing Student that can get the Brash, making him very hard to block. You have the Knuckle, and then you also have the Penguin here, which can potentially double summon something else, right? So that you're able to just push a lot of elusive damage and potentially be able to have, again, the Brash to, to push even more damage there because it's such a good keyword. Obviously, the set with the Brash is also really nice. It allows him, it, 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 it kinda, it's kind of counterintuitive, right? Because with Quick Attack, you don't care if something lower health than you blocks you. But by having the Bar Knuckle with the set, set is almost going to hit every single time, which I could potentially allow set to level up quicker. And then our set shadow will also have access to Brash, allowing us to push more damage there. Honestly, the combo that I ambition with this deck, and we do have some protection with Deny and Nupify, and not really a lot of spells. The combo that I ambition with this deck is just playing a lot of units, right? That, well, that's why we play the Sparing Student. That's why we play the Green Day Duo. We just want to slap a lot of units, get the value from the coins to be able to summon multiple units in a single turn to make your Sparing Student and your Green Day Duo bigger and bigger than the opponent can realistically react to. That's also where the Penguin comes into play. Let's say that you already have a Ringlet Duel on the field. You play the Penguin, then you use your coin, and then you summon, I don't know, let's say like a Knuckle or something else that can double up after that. It's going to be pretty, pretty crazy. Uh, it's going to be very nuts. So, yeah. Whether this is good or not, we'll see. But it's kind of like an idea that I saw where I saw Set and Jack as a potential way to push a lot of damage. Next up, we'll go with another Jack deck. And this one, I call it the... Ha ha jack, ha ha deck is Jack and Jax. So two champions that starts with J A. Now the idea with this deck again, just like all the Jack decks, we are taking advantage of the coin value. So we're playing the Jack, the Bar Knuckles, the Packet Picker, the Knuckle, the Five Punch Pablo. This one even plays the King's Court. I kind of put some more control tools here with the Heavy Metal and Make a Ray, right? So we're kind of playing the whole coin package from the Jack because that's how we can level up the Jack. But the idea is that we can give, we, because we already playing the Bar Knuckle, that's already an equipment that can synergize with Jack's equipment. We also have the Wandering Shepherd, which can give an equipment to like a Jack or something else to make it even a bigger threat. For example, if, if for some reason you get like a Scout equipment, Combat Cook as well, we can potentially level up these Jacks and then be able to give the Jack Quick Attack and Overwhelm, which can synergize pretty well with him. Catch is really good at letting us have the Bar Knuckle for one less mana if we want to set up like a really quick attack like that. And Transit Lure is a nice draw. Fish Fight is going to be amazing as a way to kind of strike the opponent's units and make it rain again because we are playing the Prize Fight with King Court and the Pablo. Parchment Hole is an amazing draw card here, allowing us to discard if you get double Bar Knuckle or if we get any useless equipment from the Improvise, we can use that while still keeping it in the field. This deck actually could be pretty solid as well. Um, I think Jax is going to level up really, really quickly because, again, you have the Bar Knuckles and you have just the Improvise units just putting a lot of pressure. And then you end up building so many coins that eventually you could probably summon enough units to overwhelm the opponent, having no equipment on them, and just push through with a big Jax, a big Jax, and kind of go from that. I, I flipped that. I said big Jack and big Jax when I... Anyways, I'm going to get this too confused every single time, especially if I try out this deck. So yeah, so this is the other combination I have, which is Jack and Jax combined together into one. Next, we're going to go with another Jack deck. Yes, another one. Obviously, I'm going to be covering most of the new champions here. So that's where you're going to see five decks with each of the new champions. Uh, some of them are going to be combined, as you saw, Samira and Jack. There's going to be a Jack set, and there's going to be a set Samira as well. So, you know, whatever. But anyways, this one is going to be Jack and Gwen. And this is probably the most boring deck that you can think of, because you're literally just putting all the Jack package and all the Halo package together and calling it a day. The reason why I like this is, again, I have very, very high steam for Brash. I think Brash is an amazing keyword. And combine that with the Halo could make for really, really big threats that the opponent will not be able to defend against. Obviously, we want to play open the foyer. We have our Bar Knuckles. We have the Jack and the Gwen, both of which can we can play either one on turn four. And they both are really good units that the opponent has to deal with because they're both putting a lot of pressure 
on the opponent. Uh, we still have our old con package, which is the packet picker, the five points Pablo. I like the double king score here instead, right? Because if you have the king score on the field and then the opening foyer triggers the next turn, it will give you the price fight right away at the beginning of the turn and you can use it right off the bat. I also like the fact that we can synergize the price fight with the hollow buff to be able to get even the biggest units down to one HP to set it up for make it rain or a hay spike to be able to kill them. And then obviously we have a lot of draw between Glimpse and Akaboros, allowing our hand to stay in a pretty healthy state. So yeah, pretty good here. Um, there's probably some other Halo cards that we could play here, but I think between the Prodigy, the Host, and the opening foil on Gwen, that's all we really need to potentially make this deck work. The last Jack deck of the day is gonna be the two champions themselves. We're gonna go Jack versus Seth. And I think this is what Riot intended us to do, right? Both champions, Jack and Seth, came with support cards that are able to create coins. And they both are kind of like interesting level ups that are related to cheating on mana. Jack needs to see you spend 12 mana in a single round, and Seth needs to see you spend 40 mana in total. So the whole idea is that you're able to level up these champions by being able to play the coins. So again, we go Bar Knuckle, we go Pocket Picker, we go Five Punch Pablo, we go Kinsko, we go Knuckle, we go Place Your Bets, we go Accountant, we go Pit Professional. Even Tag Out gives you coin. We're playing every coin card. We're going to play every single coin card. We are playing the Disciple for some heal. We have to deny for protection. And I kind of like the control tools of Heavy Metal and Make It Rain to be able to finish up some opponents. I really like Heavy Metal in this meta because he allows us to beat all the decks that are playing Bar Knuckle because he destroys the equipment first and then deals two to a unit, potentially swinging the game right away on turn two. So yeah, I think Heavy Metal is premium in this economy that you're going to start seeing with tomorrow's patch. Aside from that though, this deck is going to eventually finish by having brash units between the queen core, uh, getting some rallies with the knuckles, having your set be able to kind of just take over the game and remove the opponent's units because eventually you have the level of set uh, that then will create the uh, the the silver cost spell that obliterates a unit. Yeah, I'm just going to go like this because I don't know what the card is called. <laughs> but yeah, you know, you get the idea. It's going to be a slower version. It's going to be a slower version of Jack because you're playing more for value to go more for the mid to late game, right? But because we have denied, because we have a lot of draw, and because we have a lot of coin value, we should be able to get there just fine and then set up for like a really big attack where you just completely blow the opponent between the rally from the knuckle, knuckle, and bull, or between your units just having brash. Uh, the opponent will not be able to deal with. Hopefully, you get your elusives to at least create a couple coins. Uh, funny thing is that if you put that with the barnacles, then you're going to be creating two coins every time you hit with the accountant, which is going to be really good, right? So, But sometimes, don't put all your eggs in one basket if you know that the opponent has a way to actually deal with it. So, yeah. Uh, this this one could be pretty cool. Now, we move on to the set decks, right? So, we saw set Jack. This one is another interesting creation, which is going to be set earned. Unfortunately, Trondo got rotated, so we cannot do that Trondo Ioni idea that we talked about in the set review reactions. Instead, we're gonna settle for Set and Orn, and Set and Orn is kind of similar to what we talked about with Jack and Jax, where you're kind of relying more on putting like these big equipments on your really key champions, right? Your Set, uh, really would prefer. To, I think the Set will do really well if you have some of the equipment to kind of let you get some value here. Uh, we have a lot of coins here, which could potentially let us cheat out, not just on, but also some equipment value. We still have to deny to be able to protect our own and our set. And eventually you just win the game because obviously either on or your set will be leveled up, allowing you to just put way more pressure that the opponent can deal with. Uh, we will have big equipment here. We're playing the triple bone club, right? So the bone club can go into the set to actually get him to be a 9-10, uh, protecting him against almost everything. Uh, even if he kind of loses himself, right? So it, it's, it's pretty nice. We have the deny to protect against our DL removal. We have some recalls. We have catch here, which the whole reason of catch is to synergize with the hookmaster and with the combat cook, as well as a way to get plus one, plus one. Unfortunately, it doesn't synergize with the bone club, but I think that's good enough because we can potentially use it with the rough colossus, which could be a, a, another alternate win condition. Uh, honestly, the combo, this kind of like a Pretty straightforward combo where you do Ruthless Sweater into Bone Club if you find it. 
uh, because that will let you just level up the one right away and just put a lot of pressure into the opponent. Again, having access to this coin generation from accountant, place your bets, tag out and pit professional could allow us to be able to cheat out these combos with bone club a lot quicker than the opponent might be actually expecting. And that's the idea with this deck uh, so that then you eventually just have set on the field and, and just do your thing, right? So yeah. The next set deck is going to be set Nami. So we go back to Bill's Water, but this time we're not playing the Jack package. We're kind of playing more of Nami. I do still like the Barnacles. I think this card is absolutely busted. It gives me a lot of value with the coin, and the coin can work with Nami to buff up all the units, right? Uh, the idea, obviously, similar to Nami decks, we're kind of just stalling out until we can get the Shelly in the field. The Burrowfish is going to get to zero very quickly, especially if you end up using those coins early. Five Punch Pablo gives us access to the prize fight. He has a tune as well, which kind of synergizes with the Nami uh, and gives us a spell that then synergizes with Nami and Shelly again, right? I like the Momentous Choice because we're playing triple barnacles, and that's why Momentous Choice can be pretty good in this deck. We no longer have to play the Hookmaster. Will you style Heavy Metal, Tag Out, Deny, Place Your Bets? It's a standard of what I envision. I only build what I control to kind of look like. Like, again, I feel like all these cards are so good, right? Tag Out, especially for two mana, you can save so many of your units in this deck without barely spending anything. Like, you, you, you recall the ally and you create a coin for two mana. That's so much value. So I think tag out is really good card. The only reason I'm not playing three of is because it might be a little bit bricky if the opponent is not looking to actually remove your units. Uh, but yeah, eventually, obviously, you're going to just get your elusives really big. You're going to get your set to get a lot of value, to have really high attack, and just push a lot of damage that way, right? With the challenger and his ability of not being able to die when he levels up, then you'll be able to remove anything that you set your mind on with the, with the set. But obviously the idea is that eventually you want to just finish up with the elusives and set is more like an alternate way to just remove opponent's key units, right? Because he can challenge it or he can obliterate them with the uh, with his uh, level up ability, showstopper. I find that anyway. It's not it's not only this, it's showstopper. Next is gonna be the last set deck, which also is gonna be the last Samira deck recommendation of the day. And this is going to be Sets and Mirror. Again, this is what I like about these three champions. I feel like they could actually work with each other pretty well. Whether it's Jack Set, Jack Samira, or Samira Set. This version of Samira Set is playing mostly Ionia cards. So it is playing mostly the Set package. With the addition of obviously Samira, Stylish Shop, Pirouette, and then the Nuts and Tellstones there. Because I feel like the Nuts and Tellstones is actually really nice with Samira. It casts us to a spell and potentially lets you get like Willing Death, allowing you to get an additional strike, which then gives you access to another uh, flare in your hand, right? And the rest of the idea is going to be the set package we've been talking about for the past four deck recommendations, where you have your account and your paid professional, your. Uh, and this time we are playing the mythology, just kind of get a lot of coin value so that we can actually cheat out stuff like the old timer to kind of clear up the opponent's board and set up like a big rally, etc. So this one is going more in into the coins from, from set package than anything else. And then you just have a ton of protection, right? Moment choice, would you style, tag out, deny, face breaker. I think I like it in this version of the deck. It's probably the only set deck that I'm playing face breaker on. Allow me to st stun two of the opponent's units and then letting my other units be able to push damage through. Especially works really nicely with the old timer, which has access to double attack. So if for some reason the old timer is not able to remove all of your opponent's board, you can still remove at least one unit and then follow up with phase breaker to be able to stun the rest of the brokers, bro well, blockers, and set up the double attack to go through and finish the opponent up. So that's kind of the idea here. But Again, this is going to be the last of the decks with the new champions. The last four decks that are having recommendations today are kind of like old decks that kind of got some additional tools. Well, not all of them. Not all of them. Not all of them. This is not an old deck. This one we're going meme territory, but I really wanted to figure out if we could make this card work. This card is focused all around two cards. The Secret Keeper, which if you don't remember, is a three mana Shurima's card when you summon, create at the bottom of your deck two random level two champions that add in your hand, deck, or play. Cool. And they are leveled up. So your champion is going to come down leveled up. Then we have 
Priestess of Desolai, which is a card that was revealed a month ago or released a month ago. Deal four to me, draw a champion, or if you text that it with six different champions, summon it instead. So what is the combo here, right? You create it with the Secret Keeper, you summon it with the Desolite. We are playing, this is a Mono Shurima deck, right? We are playing the six Shurima decks, <laughs> Shurima champions that makes sense in standard. The only Shurima champion that's missing here in standard is Rek'Sai. Instead of Rek'Sai, obviously Rex is probably the worst one out of, out of the seven. So we go ahead with this six champions, which they are pretty good on their own right. Uh, we play Triple Ancient Prep. I just realized, honestly, should we play Sundis in this deck? What if Sundis actually makes sense? You also play Sundis and have another condition of Asir, Renetta, and Nasus potentially going, especially since we're playing Triple Rock Bear Shepherd. All you need is one of them to level up, and then you get the Sundis. But then the Sundis gets rid of the champions that we might have in the deck, right? So maybe that's not correct. Yeah, yeah we don't play Sundis. Never mind, because we want to have the champions in the bottom of our deck. Anyways, we play the Ancient Preparation so that we can predict, right, for the champions. Blood Lettuce just gives some value. Uh, for second by side, by kind more predict. Current Mass and more predict. Obviously, that is that we want to predict this level of champion to our hand. I like the Rock Bear Shepherd just as a card that gives us two blockers eventually. Uh, the back of one potentially gives us another predict. And then here's the other combo with this deck. Once you play Secret Keeper, you could play Golden Ambassador right after. This is why we're in Mono Shurima. So that you can play Golden Ambassador and draw one of the champions now you could hit one of these champions here of course right but you could also hit a level of champion so you know you gotta spin the wheel and see what happens uh same thing with the desert light though right you could actually get one of these champions so that's that you, you gotta just spin the wheel right you gotta spin the wheel twice you gotta hope you get a good level of champion and then you gotta hope that you actually summon it with the ambassador or with the priestess desert of the light and then we have some you know Additional support cards here. Vital right Negation, Quicksand, Keep Us Alive, Siphoning Strike, a lot of value with this deck because you're going to make all your champions be plus two, plus two, and then Castigate in case that we get into a really bad situation where we need to get our yell card. Now, this deck, it has to be a meme, right? I don't know if this deck will actually work, but I wanted to give you guys a Secret Keeper deck, and this is the best I could come up with. The other decks are going to be a little bit more standard. The first one is going to be Timo Kaelin. So Timo Kaelin gets a new card in the Flash from Peddler. That when you play a spell, you plant one Flash from Trap randomly in the top eight cards of the enemy deck. Pretty straightforward. So we combine that with the Kaelin package, and now we have a lot more Flash Bombs that could potentially kill the opponent unit, right? So this is kind of going to be your standard Timo Kaelin. We did lose some cards here, right? We no longer have this Pokey Stick, but I think that's the biggest thing here. We play Killing Timo. We have Oedipus, allowing us to have Prank that can work with both the Peddler and which e with either one of the Peddlers to be able to push uh, additional Shrooms or Flash Bombs to the deck. Concology gives spells. Chungwon gives from two Mushroom class, which again synergizes with both of these cards. Karina Mastermind is really your end game where you can just activate all those Flash Bombs, all those Pop Caps all at once. Group Shot and Pytos, I think, are re both really good. Especially in place of Pokey Stick now, Pytos, Pytos gives us a second Perilous Parry, which again synergizes with us having a lot of spells that we can use cheaply with our Peddlers. Mystic Shell for Nexus damage, Insider Knowledge to have them draw, and also us draw. Peace, peace up with Peacemaker. I do like the idea of going more in on the Flash Bombs now that we have the Peddler. It's going to keep the opponent's units a little bit weaker than they would prefer. And then we have Wallop and Puzzling Signpost to save ourselves against some of the big attacks that we might run into. So, standard Team O'Kellen deck, deck with a little bit of a twist. So, yeah. The next one is Overwhelm. Now, this Overwhelm deck is all about trying to play the first, first code mother. So, this one was kind of built around this, but as you can see, we we'll also get to play some of the, uh, some of the Sari map. Some of the uh, new Noxus packages, like Daring the Militioners and Dashing Dandy to get additional Overwhelm cards and get Stylish Shot and Pirouette. Pirouette especially is really good because it lets us stun and also potentially kill a unit just for one mana. And the Stylish Shot is really nice because a lot of our Overwhelm units are going to be able to push damage through, getting us another Stylish Shot. And it's also a nice way to kind of level up Gnar with no committal. And of course, the rest of the deck is kind of just... Pushing a lot of overwhelm damage. Bone Club is really nice. Bam, one battle fury, triple fervor, so, so that we can level up that Darius if we need to. Crimson Pigeon, 
uh, can synergize with the rope uh, with the ruthless raider or even with the cup if you want to summon the cup that way it's just an overwhelm deck it's just a big static overwhelm deck um a lot of cards that we can't play anymore like the uh like the, 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 the ancient jetty that will probably fit really well here but we can make it up by going with a lower curve and just going for the bone club and then eventually our two champion value i do like the triple nar instead of playing samira because i do want to be able to play the pokey stick and get that pokey stick for additional draw because i do feel like this deck might run out of resources really quickly if we don't if we're not able to kind of do some other stuff so yeah so this deck again just a rico red style deck and then the last deck that i'm going to showcase is darkness and I'm going to just showcase Darkness because we have Soul Harvest and Eradication as two new cards, as well as Pytos. I think Pytos, again, is really good. It's kind of like it's kind of like a Poké Stick. Now, this deck is in a weird position. We lost Pile Feast. We lost Poké Stick, which are both key cards of the deck. We did get Soul Harvest, though, Pytos, and Eradication, which can all be really good against what the meta might bring. We also have access to Ceaseless Sentry now for additional draw, and then we still have the whole Darkness package to do everything that we need to do, especially with Baker Senna. Uh, we don't have to worry about like stuff like Flock anymore, uh, which can potentially make Baker very a lot more sticky than he was before. Uh, so I do think this deck will have potential to kind of bring back and come back into the meta, especially if you start seeing like a lot of aggression and you need to find ways to like kill Samira, etc. etc. While up as, as being nice to stun, Vengeance, of course, can deal with a Jack or a Set, uh, which is why I do think Shadow has to potentially go back and go to that game state that they wanted to. But yeah. Uh, that's gonna be my last deck recommendation. I mean, this ended up being a long video. Of course, it was a long patch, including the rotation conversation and I guess a little bit of a rant that we went to, that we went into there uh, towards the middle of the video. But you know, that that's kind of what it is. <laughs> is what is what I expect. Is is what ended up happening and how rotation ended up making me feel. So yeah. But anyways, that will be it for me for today. Hope you enjoyed this patch note breaks down on all 15 decks that we recommended. I'm super excited to try the new patch tomorrow. It's going to be a completely different game because of how many cards are going to be gone from the standard set. If you enjoyed this content and enjoy our videos, make sure to like it below and subscribe to us. We post a lot of videos every single day. I'll see you. Oh, I, I, I'm forgetting things, right? I also stream on Twitch. If you're not following us on Twitch yet, Twitch determined, we're probably going to be streaming again on Thursday on a new patch. And you can also find us on Discord and Twitter. The links to those are both in the description below. Okay, now I can say goodbye. I'll see you all again tomorrow, where we're probably going to start by showcasing Samira. So, yeah, see you all then.